Hi everybody, old guy here. Now I, I must first caveat this review by acknowledging that the author and I belong to the same publishing house, so take anything that I say with the appropriate grains of whatever condiments you prefer. This is a thriller written in 1999 and updated in 2019, and, well, it's quite the exciting story. Pakistani intelligence has commissioned one of their agents to uh, create a biological weapon that can be used against the West, a rather virulent weapon that has no cure and of which no one in Western intelligence has a clue until a medical student accidentally stumbles across the plot the plotters the pakistani isi the cia park rangers and whitewater rafting instructors are all tossed together into some kind of pretty bizarre mix what's not involved isis uh, a lot of other reviewers of this novel have named them as the bad guys but ISIS didn't exist in 1999. They didn't show up until the 2010s and were in Iraq and Syria, not Pakistan. The bad guys here are a government intelligence agency, the Pakistan Inter Services, which has far more capability than a thrown together bunch of insane clowns like ISIS. Not only is ISI ruthless and brilliant, they are worldwide and sophisticated and not on our side, despite what the State Department tells you. The ISI agents and commanders in this book do share one characteristic with ISIS. They also want a worldwide Islamic revolution. Difference is, ISI can actually pull it off. And boy, do they try. Street rat Tariq Bukhari was kidnapped from his village as a child and enslaved in a factory and becomes permanently injured by the horrific conditions until an American missionary plucks him out of there. He flourishes and shows an aptitude for science and languages and enters medical school where the elite sons and daughters of privilege humiliate him at every opportunity. He becomes a world-class microbiologist seething with resentment. And that's how ISI recruiter Ghazni finds him. Ghazni sends him and his resentments to the U.S. where he can work in the Mayo Clinic labs surreptitiously developing a biological weapon under the direction of the hapless Dr. Howard, who ISI pays to look the other way. Bukhari's ISI handler Ziad shares a love of fast cars and a hatred of the West with Bukhari. And the both of them, using tradecraft and disguises, Bukhari manages to obtain the time and materials to manufacture a virus that will destroy the West. Now it's time to test it. And this is where things get weird. I mean, they really do. There's some very weird things that happen in this book. Stuff that makes you go, huh? Like uh, starting out with a prologue, which doesn't seem to have anything else to do with anything else in the book. You sort of take it on, fight, on faith that it has something to do with the ending of the book, but I wouldn't make any bets on that. Uh, there's a cross-country kidnapping that involves Dr. Howard and the medical student, Tracy Hopkins, who has somehow managed to switch the virus vials and mailed the active one to her boyfriend, Rory, who runs a whitewater rafting company. Howard takes Tracy to D.C. on a commercial flight, her skull fracture and obvious distress apparently attracting no attention whatsoever. 
two rogue CIA agents get involved, one of whom survives a car plunge off a cliff and is still able to engage long distance with a sniper rival, a few ISI bad guys on a raft in the middle of rapids. How about a senator so involved with ISI that he's on a first name basis with the ISI chief, but nobody in the U.S. government intel agencies knows anything about this? There's an incredibly contrived video interview with the odious Dr. Howard to review the procedures Bukhari uses to make the virus, and <laughs> what the deuce is this? Uh, other than a device to introduce the science, there is no way a sophisticated agency like ISI would do this. Too much evidence. But wait until someone gains the attention of a passing helicopter by throwing a rock at it. Still, the weirdness actually becomes quite entertaining, as does Desai's sometimes wacky turn of phrase, like, uh, the assorted collection of chemicals in his system did little to provide clarity to his thought process. You mean, he's stoned? And tell you, Desai knows his science. I mean, he really does. You are going to get a thesis-level review of virus development and microbiology in general, and that alone is worth the trip as well as a rather extraordinary expose towards the end of the book about Pakistani motivations. Um, I wonder if the State Department knows all this. So read this with your eyes clearly open that a lot of very strange things are going to happen and they're going to be explained in very strange formats, but don't let that put you off because it's all very entertaining. And isn't that why we read? Well, at least one reason why we read. Old guy here, see you later.